Hi guys, and uh, welcome back again. So, last weekend we had our editor uh, for War Games Soldiers and Strategy, and that's Mr. Guy Bowers, come and visit us for the weekend, as he does from time to time throughout the year. And he brought with him a huge box of figures for me to paint all different periods, all different types of guys, and just everything. It's it's an unbelievable assortment. He's got a huge figure collection, and he doesn't really need most of them himself, so he's been really generous and given me quite a lot to work with. So I've got material for weeks and weeks now for these videos, and hopefully you're going to be seeing some pretty interesting stuff coming by. So what were you in this week? Well, um, I'm going to do a period that I think a lot of people are interested in seeing. Well, I mean, it's that is to say it's a popular wargaming period, so I'm hoping that means that there's going to be some interest for, you know, how to paint figures. And what I've picked out here is this guy. He is, well, kind of English Civil War, British Civil War. He's, he's not actually, actually he's from the Monmouth Rebellion um, specifically, but, you know, that, that, that's the period is all, it's very close in time. So, I think this figure could work for the English uh, Civil War. He he looks really similar to how people were dressing in that period, so it's kind of a, you know it's it's kind of a fine difference. Um, I believe this figure is from Front Rank, so a new manufacturer here. That's nice. I like to get some variety in. Um, and uh, what are we going to be doing with him? Well, you know, nothing. Probably nothing too revolutionary. Um, this guy has sort of improvised glaive or sort of polearm weapon, so he's, you know, he's, you know, maybe a little bit lower on the hierarchy of soldiers here. So we're going to be focusing on, you know, a lot of sort of more natural, um, earthy colors, things that people who were not too high status would have been wearing, you know, uh, blues, greens, well, not, not blues, but not, you know, fancy blues, blues, greens, kind of browns and reds, and, you know, mixing those up to, just to create a nice effect for sort of a common foot soldier. Uh, he's already been prepped with, you know, the way I usually do, which is the enamel base coat, and I've uh, painted up his hands and his face. So he's all ready for us to get started. Uh, I don't think we're going to be discussing any specific techniques per se with this guy, but it may be, I think this is going to end up being a bit of a follow-up to the video I did a couple weeks ago on my sort of western gunfighter where uh, we looked at how you can take a figure with a lot of potentially, you know, different um, color choices and, you know, figure out how you can narrow that down and, you know, m make good choices, uh, choose colors that fit together um, I'm not going to concentrate this time so much on, you know, getting colors to blend together or have complementary tones in them so much, but just, you know, selecting colors that fit together well with each other and are kind of period appropriate. So let's go ahead and get started. This is definitely another figure where you've got a lot of flexibility in what colors you can use. And as I mentioned in another video several weeks ago, one way I like to tackle somebody, something like this where I, I don't really know what colors exactly I should be using is to pick one element of the clothing, make a color choice for that, and then use, use that to inform everything else. In this case, um, I was able to decide pretty quickly what color I wanted his hat to be. I wanted to use the Concord Brown Triad from Foundry. So, Knowing that, I then started making decisions about the rest of his outfit. His jacket is obviously something that is really makes a big impact in his outfit. So the color that you use there is important because, you know, that's a lot of room. That's a lot of air, surface area that you're covering there. And this unit, we already know, is sort of a low status unit. This is not like a high lord. This is sort of more of a peasant type, sort of a irregular type guy. He's got sort of an improvised pole arm. So I already know that there's certain colors that are probably just not appropriate. You know, bright blues and purples, you know, more wealthy, expensive fabrics are not going to be quite so... Uh, believable in a figure like this. So, you know, you can. what I did then was I went and looked at a lot of photographs of sort of people from this period to see what they were wearing, looked at reenactor photos, and I saw there was lots of uh, um, lots of sort of earthy greens, browns, reds, uh, blues, and grays. You know, those were common colors for, for this somebody of this type. 
So knowing that, I started sort of eliminating colors I knew I didn't want. I didn't want to do red because I do red a lot. I get tired of painting it and I wasn't interested. And that's a good way to make choice about color. Sometimes you just, you know, you just don't feel like cut painting a color. It's not inspiring, you've done it too much. And you know, anything you can do to keep painting interesting, I'd say go for it. So I didn't want to go for red. Um, I also decided against blue for the same reason, because I've been doing a lot of blue recently and I just didn't want to do it. And I, so then I thought, well, what about green? I haven't done green very much, at least in a substantial amount, so maybe this is a great opportunity for that. And that's basically how I arrived at making the coat green. And I picked out the uh, Forest Green Triad from Foundry, which is what I'm applying here. Um, and it's... A pretty nice try. It creates a nice sort of faded natural green. Now you do have to be a little bit careful with the highlight color because it's quite a lot of shades lighter than the medium and shade color. So you have to spend, I would say, quite a bit of extra time with blending and smoothing to really get a good natural effect with this color. So it's not ideal, but if you're willing to put in the work, then you can get some really nice results with that color. Uh, once his uh, jacket is finished, then I decided to move right on to his breeches. You can't really see very much of them, but you still have to make a color choice about how you want them to look. And in this case, I was sort of still working with the same color choice that I had earlier. The greens, the reds, the blues, you know, that I discussed before. And I didn't want to do more green because I already had green. And yeah, you could have made him have green pants and a green jacket, but I wanted a little bit more variation in the uniform. So that let me rule out green as a color choice. And then there was red. That's also a good choice. But in this case, I don't like how red and green look together because it makes me think, well, it makes me think too much about Christmas time. And that's a modern sort of notion, you know, a sort of a modern preconception. It really probably would have had no influence on how these people dressed back during this period. But you know, it doesn't matter. Modern preconceptions are still a very valid way to make decisions about a figure, you know, if you don't have any other rules you have to follow because, you know, people are gonna, still gonna be looking at, you know, this thing you painted and, you know, the color choices, you know, you know, like it or not, modern ideas about color are going to come into play here. So, yeah, th that let me rule out red, basically. It was, you know, it's you don't have to, but for me, that felt wrong. So then I j basically decided I would choose blue. And I went with the Foundry Storm Blue Triad, and you don't have very much to see, so you can apply it very, very quickly. With that done, things get a lot easier because you've really started, you know, you've really finished all the areas where you really have to make very specific choices about color. A lot of the other areas, it's easy. You already know what color you need to do. So like the stockings, which I work on next, you can see, are going to be kind of an off-white color. And the cravat that he's wearing, also white, off-white color, is natural, logical. So I'm using the Foundry Boneyard Triad to paint those two areas. Next, I'm going to do another area that's where the color is really obvious, and that's his his shoes and also his sword scabbard, which I have decided I'm going to paint using the Foundry Charcoal Gray Triad. So there's a basic black base coat followed by some increasing layers of gray there to get some highlights. I am also using, in this case, um, Arctic Gray Shade to get a really high highlight sort of on the edges of the leather pieces where they come together and to give the impression that everything is, you know, really shiny on these particular pieces. And now I'm going to move on to the Baldrick. Um, I am base coating this using um, Vallejo German Camouflage uh, Black Brown, which is the color I really like for a nice, rich leather effect. I'm also going to put that on just the um, handle of his, uh, or the grip of his sword, because I want that also to be this sort of nice uh, leather color. Uh, once I finish base coating these leather areas, I'm also going to base coat the um, handle of his polearm, his glaze, whatever you want to call it. I'm using um, the um, Foundry Bay Brown shade for that. That's a, a color I use a lot for a sort of a wood base coat. Um, after that, I'm going to start doing some highlighting. On the leather, I like to highlight first with some um, Bay Brown Light. Um, it's a nice red brown. It, it works really well. And I always, as, as I've described before, I always sort of start at the top and sort of blend downward so it looks lighter at the top and gets darker towards the base. It, it, it has a very good way, it sort of creates a very convincing leather effect I've noticed and I know other people do this so it's not something I came up with. 
I'm then gonna use a chestnut shade and chestnut medium to highlight both the leather areas and the handle of the pole arm as well. And I'm gonna be using the same technique on the leather that I used for the sort of the bay brown color. So I'm gonna take that chestnut shade, apply it to the top and blend it down. I'm just gonna do it a lot more sparingly than I did with the um, bay brown color. And with the chestnut medium on the leather, I'm gonna only put the slightest edge highlight at the top because I don't want too much. I'm gonna be much more generous with those two colors on the glaive handle because I, I you know, I'm, because this is a case where I'm using the same colors for two different uh, pieces of equipment, but I don't want them to look like the same material. So you have to be a little bit careful here. So I'm gonna apply a lot more chestnut shade. I'm gonna apply as a much more generous highlight all over the glaive handle. And the same with the chestnut light. I mean, I'm obviously only gonna apply it sort of more to the top of the pole and sort of blend downwards, but I'm gonna apply a lot more of it. So you're gonna get uh, an overall impression of something, even though we're, we're, all, we're using essentially the same colors here, because we started with different bases and we're applying, you know, the amounts in, you know, concentrations of the colors, you know, differently. You, the ultimate effect is that you're going to look like you've got like two different materials and two different browns that you're using. Now we're finally getting back to painting the hat, which is a color choice that, as I said, I made at the very beginning, but I didn't want to paint it right away because this is an area, you know, the tops of figures has, it gets touched a lot when you're painting. So it would have been a bad choice to start out and do it right away because I probably would have messed it up and worn off a lot of the paint had I done that. And so I'm just going to go right ahead, as I said in the beginning, and apply the Foundry Conquer Brown Triad here and just, you know, layer it on in a very normal fashion. I'm also going to go ahead and paint a few elements using the Rawhide Triad from Foundry, which include the band on his hat and also sort of the wrapping that's holding his blade onto the handle of his pole arm because these seem like a good sort of place for sort of rawhide leather or sort of a rope color. And when you're painting the, um, the wrappings on his glaive, you, you, you're gonna have to be a little bit careful because to you do a little bit of fine lining so that you can pick out those kind of strips that are wrapped around there. It's a little bit of trouble, but it will reward some, you know, careful, you know, painting here. I also, before I did either of those things, highlighting the, the rope that is on the hat and the glaive. I also washed it with Reichland uh, Flesh first to get sort of a sort of a darker color. And it's always a good idea to use washes on areas like that where you've got deep recesses because it'll help you much to bring out the color and contrast in those areas much more easily. Still got two more areas on the figure where we have to make some color choices. And these are just small accent areas, which is why I didn't do them earlier. The first of these sort of ribbons he's got tied around the bottom of his breeches, kind of to be a little bit showier looking. And this is an area where you can choose to use a more rich, more luxurious color, because realistically speaking, even a poor fellow like this guy might have, you know, been able to afford to splash out a little bit here and wear something a little bo bit more showy because realistically something like ribbon is going to be a little bit more within his means than buying a whole brocaded jacket. So I'm going to go ahead and use yellow here. It's a really nice um, bright color. It makes a great accent. It, you should use it sparingly because if you put it over big areas it's just it's just too much. You know it's overwhelming but it's perfect for these little detail areas where you need a pop of color. I am using um, the Foundry Ochre Shade, an um, ochre medium color, followed by a boneyard medium highlight on these ribbons. And it's, you can do this very, very quickly. It doesn't, you know, you don't, you could, this will be, you know, this is not a big deal. It doesn't take much blending or anything to accomplish this. The other area that's an accent we haven't done is his feather on his hat. Um, you could potentially make this a lot of colors too. This is another place where you might have expected a poor, you know, soldier like this to get a little fancy and splash out and be a bit showier. But in this case, I don't really feel like overdoing it. I don't want to get too garish. So I'm just going to go safe and normal and go ahead and just use the um, Arctic Gray Foundry Triad and paint his feathers sort of a gray-white color. Nothing particularly special. You don't always need to feel like you need to, you know, make unusual choices. It's perfectly fine to, you know, go a conservative route when you're doing these figures. We've now got just a few areas that we need to finish up. And for efficiency reasons, I'm going to sort of work on them simultaneously. So while one thing's drying, I'll be painting something else. I'm going to be first start out by base coating his hair. And I'm going to be using 
um, the British uniform brown shade color as a base for his hair. Um, and I, once it's dry, I'll apply a wash of Agrax Earth Shade so I can get some deeper color in the recesses. I'm also going to start base coating the metal areas on this figure, which include all his buttons, the, the blade of his pole axe, and, and then also sort of the, the grip or the guard and um, pommel on his sword. For the um, sort of steel metal areas, I'm going to be using um, German gray and natural steel from Vallejo mixed to create a dark base shade for those metal areas. Oh, I forgot also the buckles on his shoes. I'm going to make those silver too because I feel this sort of silver tin color on his uniform is a more fitting accent for a low status individual like this. Um, I'm also going to base coat the areas on his sword and those I do want to use sort of a bronzy gold color and I'm going to mix some Vallejo bronze and some Vallejo German camouflage black brown and use that as the base coating on the, that those areas. Uh, when you're base coating the buttons take your time you know be a little bit careful this uniform is nice because the buttons are well sculpted I mean on this particular figure so it's not too difficult but you still need to be careful so that you, you know you don't make a mess and you get nice you know even looking buttons on the uniform. I'm now going to go ahead and do some highlight in the metal areas. I'm going to use for all the sort of steel areas, I'm going to use just flat natural steel that I thin down. I'm going to apply it kind of lightly all over the blade and put a special emphasis on the cutting surface. And then with the buttons, the same thing. I'm just going to highlight them all with that natural steel color. Keep it really simple. The, uh, the, um, the grip and the pommel on the sword, I'm going to highlight using old gold. I'm only going to put one highlight on that area because you're not going to see it very much, so there's no point in really spending a lot of time messing with it. Now I'm just go going to go ahead and finish some details, like his hair, which I'm going to go ahead and highlight, finish highlighting with the um, German uniform medium and light color, you know, where it needs those li those lighter areas. And I'm going to add one more wash of Agrex Earthshade just to unify his hair and also go back and fill in the creases or the recesses of his hair again where I got a little bit too much light paint in. I'm then going to add one final highlight to the steel areas using Vallejo Silver. And that'll be on his buttons and buckles, but especially focused on his, the blade of his glaive. Um, I'm going to work on sort of putting a, a very a light silver line along the cutting surface so it looks like that side is sharp. Um, this can be a little difficult because Vallejo Silver is, I have mentioned earlier, but this is a fussy color. It's hard to get the right consistency and it doesn't, it doesn't go, flow on very well. So once I've painted that blade in and got it, you know, nice and defined, I'm going to go back in with my original metallic shade color, the German gray and that natural steel, and I'm going to kind of actually paint a line in between the sharp uh, blade and the rest of the weapon and sort of blend that out so that I can get a cleaner effect. You, you're sometimes with metals, you know, to get the effect you want, you're going to sometimes have to do some of this cleanup work. It's unfortunate, but, you know, it, it can be unavoidable because of just, you know, the, the transitions are always not as crisp as you're, you know, hoping for. So that's our sort of Monmouth Rebellion ECW soldier all finished up. I hope you found this useful. Um, when you're making these color choices for figures, also keep in mind that it's useful when you're putting a whole unit of these fellows together. You can use the same colors throughout a unit, but then sort of just mix them up, like have a green pants and a blue coat instead of what we did here, or, or use that brown red for the coat. You know, and that way you get a unit that looks cohesive, like it goes together, but there's still differences between the units. You can even bring in another color that I, you didn't put on all your soldiers into that mix that you in, sort of incorporate into some, but not others. And you know, feel like everybody's supposed to go together. So I really hope you enjoyed this. Um, as always, please, you know, like this video, leave your comments, you know, tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I've really been enjoying making this series so far and your encouragement and your suggestions, you know, it really helps keep me going. So once again, um, I will see you next time and until then, happy painting.